Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna go over how you can create a date and timestamp in Excel. I'm gonna do this using Visual Basic, just a few lines of code, so it's not terribly complicated. Um, there are ways that you know people have tried using um, or creating date stamps using the now function, but the disadvantage of doing it without method is that the now function, every time it recalculates, it's gonna give you the current date and time. So it's not effective as a date and timestamp because you know the date and time so you want it to remain static so you know that when uh, when that was triggered, when that was populated. But you can use the now function within Visual Basic and because Visual Basic will um, basically hard code it for you in in your cell, you don't have to worry about that changing after the fact. So I'll show you an example of what I mean. So let's say we create um, a few fields here. One for, let's say we're tracking shipments. So let's say uh, we'll have a status of whether something was shipped and we'll have a shipped date. So let's do something really simple and just say, okay, if we just mark an X in here, we can say, okay, if this is equal to X, so lowercase x, then we'll return the now function. Otherwise, it'll be blank. Now, the one thing when you're working with dates is you want to make sure they're formatted properly. So here it's in a number value. So I'm going to select this entire column, right click, format cells. And then under the date category, if you click into here, you'll see there's an option here that has the date as well as the time. So that's what I'm going to use here. And now we've got the date and time. But the problem with this with this approach is if I refresh it just by hitting the delete key, for example, you can see it changes the time. And every time I press the delete key or any time there's a recalculation, you can see that that formula is recalculating. So it's not, not an ideal situation to, to use that. It's not really helpful for date stamps either. So what I'm gonna do is use, use Visual Basic for this purpose. Now, you can launch Visual Basic easily from the Developer tab. If you don't have the Developer tab, if you go to File and Options, there's, an, there's a place where you can modify the ribbon. Simply just enable the Developer tab and then it'll be vi visible on your ribbon. And you can launch Visual Basic right from here. You can also use the shortcut Alt F11. And when you do, you will see a new window pop up. And so to, to create a custom function, what you can do is insert a module from the insert menu here, there's an option for module. And now anything you code in here is gonna be available on, on this workbook. So to create a function, I'm gonna use the function keyword and the name of what I want the function to be called. I'm gonna use the word timestamp. And then in parentheses, I'm gonna specify the arguments that it's gonna take in. Now, <clears throat> All that I'm going to do is reference the, the value in the shipped column. So I'm going to call that variable shipped and I'm going to declare it as a string value because it's going to contain letters. And you can see automatically this end function notation gets added because VBA knows I've, I've started a function here. And so I'm just going to create, as promised, just a few lines of code a simple if statement to say, okay, if shipped, so if this variable that I'm passing through, which is string value, if it's equal to the value of X, then what I'm gonna do is set this timestamp equal to now. I'll explain how this works in a second. Otherwise, set the timestamp equal to blank. And now let's close the if statement. I've added some indentation here to make this easier to read, but you don't have to do that. So how this function works is we're gonna type the word timestamp in Excel. And when we do, it's gonna prompt us for a variable. That's gonna be this shipped variable, which should be a string value. Again, we're gonna enter the value of X if it's shipped, blank if it's not shipped. So that's where that's gonna come from. So it's gonna check, okay, if that cell, if that cell value is indeed a lowercase x, then, what it's gonna do is set the timestamp, which is this function, it's gonna return a value of today's date and the current time. 
Otherwise, else, if it doesn't equal this, then it's going to return a blank value. So that's going to be the result of running this function. So if it's x, then the function is going to return a value of today's date and time. Otherwise, it'll be blank. So that's it. So now I'm going to go back into Excel here. And I've left that uh, previous date stamp here just, uh, just to make it easier to, to compare against. So now I'm going to use the timestamp function. You can see it right there. And I'm going to reference this value here, which right now is blank. Close it. And it's blank. So, and you can see that this ship date here changed as I did that calculation. I didn't have to hit the delete key. Just any sort of calculation re-triggers that. Now I'm going to enter x here, and now you can see both of these values now equal the same thing just because this is actually the current time, and this is recalculating to the current time. So I'll check back on this in, 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 in a minute or so, but basically a, a quick recap of, of what, what I've done here is basically go into Visual Basic, create this timestamp, and then we're using that, that timestamp function now to hold that shipped value. And so you can adjust this if you want to put in something else besides an X value or something else. Uh, it doesn't have to be a string, but basically the, the main thing is we're looking for something to indicate that this item has shipped or that it the, the status, whatever the case may be, is triggered. So you can modify this um, to whatever, whatever the case uh, may be, whatever you want it to be. But as long as it triggers that, then the return will be the current date and time. If not, it's blank. And so now another minute has passed. So now what I can do is let's hit X here. You can see this one's recalculated, this one has not. Now if I copy this formula down, this one has this current date, 105 p.m. This one is still at 104 p.m. So that one has not changed, even though this one's recalculated this one's calculated to the current date. If I press the delete key over and over again, you can see you can see the only value that's changing is the one that has this now function right within the formula. Even though Visual Basic is using the now function in here, it's not triggering a recalculation each and every time because it's because it's already coded into into Visual Basic. It, it's keeping that value value static. It's not changing it over and over again each time the recalculation. So this is the benefit of coding it in VBA versus having it right within a function right here. And so another minute has passed. Let's put next value down here. And now you can see we've got 106, 105, 104. All of them are staying the same. This one keeps on recalculating. So by using Visual Basic, you can avoid this problem of having your date stamps recalculate and not being not being not remaining static so as long as, as you're willing and, and comfortable to you know go into visual basic you know enter in a few lines of code and then use this you know you have a way to easily create these these date, date stamps and um, be able to use them wherever you want and and the versatility of them is that you know you can you can reference them wherever you want i mean it, this can be a cell over here for example to say, okay, use the timestamp function, reference that cell back there. And again, we just wanna apply the formatting. So if we want the, if you wanna copy the same format, you can use the format painter here instead of going through the formatting cells option. And so we can reference it from over here. We can reference, you know, a, a different date. Let's say we have an ordered status, right? We have an ordered status, let's say X here. So these ones are all ordered so let's clear this clear this one out and instead reference here right so we can have multiple places so you don't have to have to be limited to referencing the same same cells or them being in the same location so if you want timestamps in multiple places on your spreadsheet if you want to look at you know, multiple tick marks or, or checkbox, whatever the case may be, you can do that because with the argument, you can specify which cells you want to look at. And the value that gets populated is the one that contains that specific, 
that specific cell. So as you can see, if I go in and actually modify modify that um, that value, then it will actually recalculate. But as long as I don't go in there and do that, then it's going to be just fine. Like if I go to re review or um, under formulas actually and do a calculation, there's an option to recalculate. You can see it's not doing it in there. So un unless I actually go in here and, and edit the formula and force it to recalculate, it's not going to do it on its own. So even though it still is using that now function, that's the way around it where you can still have the date stamp use that and it's not going to re-trigger. So see if I use the delete key, this one's still stuck on 109. These one don't change. But if I do go in here and let's say I modify this and do it again, then that forces that recalculation. So then I do run into that issue. But that, that'd be only if you're actually going into here and editing it. If you're not doing that, then it's fine. These calculations, as you can see, this one's still stuck on 104, 105, 106. They have not changed. They have not gone in to re-trigger that calculation. It's only this one that does it. So using VBA, this can be a good way to, you know, do uh, update your your calculations to make sure that you've 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 got a more reliable way to enter in um, the date stamp. Just because you can utilize the now function. But if you're doing it within the context of an Excel formula right here, as opposed to Visual Basic, then it's not going to be terribly reliable for you. And it's, it's going to be changing over and over again every time you do a recalculation. So the safest way is to build that custom function in Visual Basic where you can reference it, reference this cell, put the value wherever you want. You've got a lot of flexibility, just like a regular Excel function. So that's, I think, the best way to do it. If you're creating, uh, if you're wanting to create a custom uh, date and timestamp in Excel. So if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.